Until 2020, global air traffic was growing at a significant and continuous rate, making the skies increasingly congested as more people took to the air. Operating aircraft with passengers and crew clearly requires careful oversight and management, and that's where the air traffic controller comes in. Link 132, runway 19, the surface wind 150 degrees, 11 knots, midpoint 150 degrees, 26 knots, the end of the runway 150 degrees, 11 knots. Cleared takeoff, report on track with estimates. Cleared for takeoff and on track with estimates, next link 132. The role of an air traffic controller is essential to the safe movement of aircraft. Pilots rely on air traffic controllers to guide them on their journey from one airport to the next. So the air traffic controller's role is to provide a safe, orderly and expeditious flow of air traffic, whether they're on the ground or in the air. Uh, my name is Dale Russell and I'm an air traffic controller based at St. Helena Airport and at Kruger and Pomalanga International in South Africa. I grew up near uh, the main airport in Harare in Zimbabwe and I've always had a love of everything aviation. Uh, basically, if it can fly, I'm interested. So when this opportunity came up, it was like a dream come true. Ensuring the safe movement of aircraft on the ground and in the air is vital to maintain confidence in this global transport network. In 2019, Four and a half billion people flew on commercial aircraft. And whilst there is a collective responsibility throughout the aviation industry to ensure these four and a half billion people have a safe journey, the air traffic controller is key to ensuring that safe journey on a minute by minute basis. St. Helena Airport has two on site air traffic controllers who control the movement of aircraft to, from, and around the airport. They also conduct weather observations and coordinate with local and international search and rescue teams. So air traffic control is broken up into three basic disciplines. There's aerodrome control, which um, is based around, it's, it's control around an airfield, a few thousand feet up, not very far away. Basically everything is done visually. You can see the aircraft, you can separate them. Then you have approach control, which deals with that airspace above aerodrome control. Uh, which is for the aircraft that are climbing or descending into that airfield. Area control is the third one, um, which is basically all aircraft that are maintaining levels, high flyers between two different cities or two different countries. The service that's provided at St. Helena is aerodrome control and approach control, and we provide it as a combined service. So there's one controller doing both things at the same time. The airspace itself, the St. Helena airspace, falls within the Luanda Oceanic airspace, which means we coordinate with Luanda for any aircraft that are coming into our airspace or going out of our airspace. So how the airspace is divided up is basically the national borders of a country. Any airspace within those borders becomes sovereign airspace. And over the ocean, the airspace is divided up amongst the countries that border that ocean along the edges of a continent. We have scattered cloud approximately 1,200 feet, temperature plus 2,3, dew point plus 2,0, QNH 1,0,1,5. Being a controller requires a number of key skills. The most important of these skills is, unsurprisingly, communication. Link 131 copied, understand flight level 360, just confirm. Air traffic controllers will maintain communication with pilots from the moment they start their engines to the moment they land and park. Um, so air traffic control will communicate with aircraft uh, using radios. Um, we have specifically allocated frequencies that are allocated per unit um, and we use what we call aviation English, which is basically English but specific phrases and words that anyone is able to learn, um, especially if their first language is not English. It makes it easier for them. Readback is correct and confirm they can contact you on CPDLC Foxtrot November Alpha November. Copy, thank you. And still no reported traffic 2370, confirm. 
So we used a phonetic alphabet because if you just say letters the way they are in the alphabet, you can confuse them really easily. B sounds like C, sounds like D, sounds like E. The phonetic alphabet will use a word that starts with the letter that you are trying to use. So uh, A is alpha, B is bravo, C is Charlie, and it just reduces um, any kind of confusion based around that. Okay, they are aware, they will get hold of you. What is your um, CPDLC call sign? Foxtrot Alpha Juliet Oscar. Okay, cool, I will advise them. In order to maintain safe flight, air traffic controllers need to know where the aircraft is in relation to the ground and to other aircraft. Across aviation, a system known as separations ensures aircraft operate at a safe distance from each other, from the ground and from protected airspace. Air traffic controllers use this system to instruct pilots during their flight and this includes their aircraft's heading, altitude and airspeed. All air traffic controllers use the um, DOC 4444 from ICAO, which is the civil, sorry, International Civil Aviation Organization. And DOC 4444 is basically our rule book for all the different standards of separation that we can use to keep aircraft separated. It's um, how we can use visual separation, geographical separation, or use instruments to provide standard separation between aircraft. Controllers usually rely on radar to identify an aircraft, its height, speed and direction. But when radar is not available, they will use this information gathered from the pilots to mentally build a 3D picture of where the aircraft is located in relation to the airport and to other aircraft in the air. So the difference between the two units that I work at, the one here and the one in South Africa. Um, the equipment basically is the same. I do procedural control here and there. Uh, basically procedural control means you don't have a radar to see where your aircraft is. Um, the only major difference is the fact that there's a lot more aircraft that I deal with at any moment in South Africa, where here we have a lot less air traffic. Here at St Helena, the airport has partnered with the South African Air Traffic Navigation Services organization called ATNS. The Air Traffic and Navigational Services um, company in South Africa has the contract to man the tower here on the island. There are always two controllers here with another two that are available for relief duties when necessary. So the attributes to being an air traffic controller are basically calm, um, a calm demeanor. You have to be able to make really quick decisions based on the situation that's in front of you you have to be able to deal with stress because although we have separations and pre-planning that we do in order to control our aircraft if something goes wrong it goes wrong very quickly and we have to be able to assist um, with information and directions for pilots to assist them dealing with any emergencies they have. In the UK to become eligible to begin training as an air traffic controller Candidates will need to have at least five GCSEs at Grade 4 or above, or an equivalent, and will need to be medically fit. Candidates also need to pass online and in-person assessments to test their cognitive and decision-making skills, which are important to the job. Having successfully completed these steps, the candidate can then begin their training. Becoming an air traffic controller takes a number of years of study and training. So the skills and aptitudes you need to become an air traffic controller for both the UK and for South Africa, you need to have GCSEs or grade 12, depending on which country you're in, with math and English. Um, you need to be physically fit and then you go through a set of aptitude tests which basically check that your brain is twisted the right way to be a good air traffic controller. <laughs> Once you've got the qualifications and you've been through your aptitude tests, um, you'll go into theoretical and simulated training. In South Africa, it's done in Johannesburg at Oratambo International. And in the UK, it's done in Bournemouth at uh, the Nats head office. 
Um, it takes between six months, I think, and a year and six months. So once you've uh, been through all your testing and you have the required skills, you are employed as a trainee. In South Africa, that means that you then become an employee of the company and they do house you for your initial training. Once a controller has finished their training, they are then assigned placements at various airfields to gain experience of aviation operations. Generally, assignments will take into account the preference of the controller. However, this isn't always possible and company requirements are a key factor in how postings are decided. So once you've completed your college training and you become a licensed controller, you're then assigned to a unit. At that unit you undergo on-the-job training. Um, the amount of training you require is normally counted in hours and it depends on the discipline that you're going into and the unit that you're at for how many hours it is. Um, just an aerodrome unit could be anywhere between 50 and 100 hours where approach procedural um, would be anywhere between 100 and 200 hours and if you do radar it can be between 200 and 400 hours so it depends what discipline you're going into. For experienced air traffic controllers there is potential to apply their skills at other airports around the world. Um, once you have your qualification within a certain country obviously you can work within that country um, should you decide to move. It depends on the country that you're moving to um, for whether they'll accept part or all of your license as given. When I moved from Zimbabwe to South Africa, I had to go through aptitude tests and write exams. Um, obviously, they did take into account the fact that I was already a controller, but I did have to do exams as well. The advancement of technology in recent years has meant that now air traffic control services don't necessarily need to be based at an airport. So remote towers are basically towers where a service is provided by controllers that are situated somewhere else. You'll have cameras put up um, for a 360 view of that space and the controllers are controlling from somewhere, it could be hundreds of miles away. Um, London City Airport is the first major international airport um, that is fully remotely controlled and they've been doing that for about a year now. Becoming an air traffic controller is a challenging yet rewarding job. Trainee air traffic controllers can expect to earn £18,000 in the UK. Once they achieve their full controller licence, they can expect to earn from £40,000 and upwards, depending upon their posting and role. I think the most difficult part of being an air traffic controller is the amount of responsibility that you hold. Because you're not just dealing with one pilot or one aircraft, you're dealing with multiple aircraft and what could be anything up to 800 people on each aircraft. Um, and I think that responsibility is very sobering. Um, you can't actually focus on it all the time otherwise we wouldn't be able to do our jobs. We have to just think about each individual aircraft and keeping them separated. So becoming an air traffic controller, other than being financially rewarding in most places, um, you get to do shift work. So you don't work eight to four normally. And if you work a really busy traffic situation and you've got a lot of aircraft and you manage to get them out of the way, it's the ultimate high um, just to be able to do that. Further information about air traffic control can be found on the ATNS website at www.atns.com as well as the UK National Air Traffic Services website at www.nats.aero. The Nats website has a number of online games that can test potential controllers for aptitude and ability. Perhaps give them a go to see if air traffic control is for you. Additional information can also be obtained from St. Helena Airport Limited by contacting us at info at St. Helena Airport .aero or calling us on 25180. We'd be more than happy to show you around the airport to give you a first-hand experience of what's involved in air traffic control. You may even get a go on our simulator. <laughs>